Uh, so I would like to start out with uh, just an opening prayer. I'm a extreme fan um, and pretty uh, faithful uh, meditator. I, I believe just centering the body and sp centering the spirit just opens the door to prayer a little easier. Um, and it allows me to calm my body in a way that uh, really helps with accessing a spirit for me. So if we could all just take a minute to take about three really deep breaths and truly identify with, with the glory of the day, the fact that you are here, the fact that God is present for you and for each and every one of us. And that though we are and can be afraid right now, Lord, we come to you and we, we ask for you to come within our hearts and to truly move through uh, my words today to uh, my church family to so they can speak to someone else and, and just provide your light through word, through comfort, through kinship, and through community. Uh, Lord Jesus, we humbly just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot say it enough. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and we humbly bow before you and your power, Lord. In Jesus' name, humbly pray, amen. Um, good morning again. So I'm going to jump in first with a pretty a detailed bio. I really appreciate this opportunity to you know, give a little information about me um, and where I'm from and literally my walk with God. Uh, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Um, and how, yeah, I've come to be who you know today. Um, so <clears throat> good morning, uh, church family. Intentionally giving all honor to God who is light, who is my light and my salvation. Uh, for those who do not know, my name is Sister Ashley Dennis, um, and I am blessed to bring you the word today that I have titled, Do Your Job, A Guide for When You Arrive. So a little bit about me before we jump into that is a uh, contribution to this land outside of being a beautiful child of God. Um, I am a healer by plant. I, you can see some of my babies behind me. Um, plants bring me total solace and joy. Um, it is a reminder of God's grace and growth and, and stillness um, every day. Um, moving on, I am a blessed, blessed wife uh, to the beautiful and wonderful Genesis Tremaine we all know and love. Um, I am a student of my ancestors. Uh, my grandmother taught me how to plant. My other grandmother taught me how to fish um, and, and, and truly provide. Um, I am also a, it, it took me a minute to really find a way to explain this, but I think quality of life activists uh, for all who work this walk this earth is extremely is extremely um, direct. I I think we all deserve to live abundantly, and I think a honest regard and respect to uh, the Most High first and foremostly, and 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 that automatically drops into yourself. So. Um, accessing, you know, the quality of life for you and helping others get there is truly a way that I've I've learned to understand this world that we've been given. Um, and so I was born in the late fall, November of the late 80s. Uh, I argue with some of my friends that say I'm not an 80s baby because I was born in 89, but I'm an 80s baby. Um, in Brooklyn, New York, uh, to a family of independent and God-fearing women. Um, and I was spiritually reared uh, specifically by Mother Doris L. Cook, which is my maternal grandmother, uh, Reverend Willie Mae Davis, uh, who was my first Reverend Mother. Um, I truly now understand that meaning, um, both of Triumph, the Church of Kingdom God in Christ in Brooklyn, New York, um, as well as Mother Helen Bing Dennis, my paternal grandmother of Runs Missionary Baptist Church, South Carolina. Um, as a child, I spent summers traveling with these women, dreaming, imagining, 
we had an old station wagon that we would drive uh, basically up and down the East, Co East Coast um, for church gatherings that I interestingly called Chautauquas as a kid, but they happened a lot in Chautauqua, New York. Um, but I would spend summers in South Carolina as well um, with my grandmother, Dennis. Uh, it was her who first introduced me to land and soil and vastness. I grew up as a city girl. Um, so space wasn't something that was, you know, easy to access. And I would spend these summers just literally rolling in nothing but grass and somehow entertain myself as a young girl. Um, the South always held, has always held a really amazing space in my heart. Um, but yeah, that's where I originally fell in love with the dirt of the world um, the, in the most positive way um, and truly began to understand the systems and cycles of how like God would has presented in my life in different ways. That first vegetable garden that my grandmother, you know, pulled me into um, without question truly changed my life. And, and she is now my ancestor and walks with me every day. So I, I, I just thank God for her and for our mothers, right? This is Women's Month and we are celebrating Youth Women's Month. So I think it's important to identify with the maternal line that has raised us. Uh, so <laughs> I have, at a young age, I was always interested in just being smart. Um, I was an honor roll student and a Mensa enthusiast. It was like all I wanted for my eighth birthday. <laughs> and yes, that's the high IQ society. That's all I wanted to be a part of. Um, but uh, this drive of intellect led me to our very proud uh, secondhand encyclopedia that I read through front to back. Uh, I remember running my fingers over the photos and I remember pushing myself to enunciate the words um, and truly falling into this whimsical space of literature and science and um, photo, uh, essentially. Um, and uh, through all of this, flora and fauna really encapsulated a lot of my life. Uh, plants and animals have always been a a space I enjoy moving forward. But um, I am, I would say, a true urban scholar. I've, I've been educated from Brooklyn, New York, to Harlem, New York, to Newark, New Jersey. Um, moving a bit ahead, I began my career at 19 years old, working for uh, the largest, one of the largest national utility companies of New York, Con Edison. Um, there, I learned to navigate the social economic disparities, interestingly, around our, our city, my city, my home. Um, I was able to hear the voice of like my underserved neighbor in a way that was so intimate and direct. Um, and I was able to support and, and learn the business and logistics of a multi-billion dollar organization. Um, so it, it was all very personal. So in my hometown, through tens of thousands of calls, I actually serviced uh, <laughs> uh, gas, electric, and steam emergencies directly uh, within a 24-hour command center. I, I co-founded uh, a still-running skills group that is used to navigate these emergencies uh, within Con Edison to service the five boroughs in Westchester. Um, but after a wonderful nine year tenure, I realized I deserved a little bit more color in my life, um, a little bit more art. I was, I had quieted the, the learner in me had quieted the creative. Um, so I found a way to truly access who I was through taking a minute. And, and, and meditating, back to meditating, and listening to that voice of, of and now I know God showing up in my life. Um, and it, it was magnificent. I resigned my good job and um, went, you know, to soul, literally locate, it wasn't even soul searching, um, and to connect to really where I was and what God truly meant for me in this world as a black woman, as a queer woman, 
um, as a woman, um, what can I, what can I actually give? What, what, what is, what was my body put here for? Um, so this was, and you'll hear this a couple of times today, uh, the, one of the first power pivots I had towards Christ and towards my development and understanding how positivity and, and literally what would Jesus do, how, how simply that can help me through, um, accessing the world to help others. Um, that, that's always been a driver for me. Um, but fast forwarding up to today, I presently, um, have the honor of supporting my wonderful wife um, through her endeavors, um, as well as I represent and assist the addition and sale of fine art with one of the oldest auction houses, still running, Sotheby's, um, New York. Um, outside of my time at work and working with my partner. Um, it's mostly dedicated to gardening locally in Newark, um, cooking, food justice, uh, volunteer work in the South Bronx, um, board membership of operational outreach and a Sunday school teacher of our wonderful, beautiful kids that I miss so much right now. <laughs> I miss you kiddos. Um, yeah, so that's, um, a bit of me um, and how I've come to be today. Um, it's been a lot, there, there's a lot more in there, right? But in, in totality, how God has pulled me through has shined light on the lessons I've needed to learn to get me exactly where I've needed to be. Um, yeah, so enough about me. Uh, jumping into the body of this all and really directing towards Women's Month. Um, you know, thank you and, and God bless you all that have spoken before me in this wonderful month where we get to celebrate our foremothers um, and those who truly have made a difference in the world, uh, let alone our personal lives. So I really want to say thank you to all you have who have spoken beforehand um, and provided, you know, your truths and compassion towards the embodiment of God's work. Um, each and every one of us needs it and deserves it. So thank you again. Um, so I want to start this by asking how exactly have we become masterpieces through God's light? And as works of, and as God's works of art, how do we guide the understanding of God's word? So, with asking myself these two questions, I arrived to a three-step guide on how to do your job when you've arrived right on time for your relationship with Christ and then realize there's no instructions. Um, a personal memoir. <laughs> so one, um, we have, uh, Genesis and I have a very wise and my greatest opinion mantra in our house, do your job frankly, simply put, um, and when you literally let these three words get to the like the darkest places that you very rarely touch, it invigorates something in you and you that that's where drive lives, that's where grit lives. Um, you may be asking yourself, like, what does that mean? So I ask if you aren't, close your eyes, take a minute to meditate on the Lord, how amazing God is, right? You, you, you don't necessarily have to know in the moment what the job is. It's, it's knowing that through a transition within itself that that road is God's love already. Um, you wouldn't be on it if it wasn't. Uh, see yourself traveling your hallelujah highway, showered in God's abundance, uh, reveled in joy, saturated with faith, bursting with brand newness. Now give yourself permission to get the job done, whatever that job may be, you need right now. You have the power to manifest the totality of God's presence in your life with just a moment's prayer and intention to get the job done. This comes from uh, what supported this space as well as uh, Matthew 6.33, which tells us to, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. I think we are reminded to Paul is and once again, power pivot, which is a term that was uh, celebrated in front of me by a very dear associate and scholar. So I, I didn't come up with that, it's not mine, but um, 
it, it, it encouraged me so much when I heard it. Um, you get to always pause and power pivot. And if God is the greatest point, and we, as Christians, we truly believe that God is our greatest point of self, then we get to call on God in the moment and power pivot on the Lord. Um, and, and even if it's just to arrange priorities or to really understand what's going on, the point is to properly invest in what God has invested in us. You are the breath of life. You, you were given breath. So it is your responsibility to breathe that right back out. Um, within the current year and uncertain like societal times that we're presently experiencing with, um, you know, just socially, um, we all understand what's happening medically, but I think the space we, we really have to fight for is how we identify emotionally here. Um, so take this time that things are a little bit more quiet. I've begun to do it. I invite you to do it. Um, take the time to celebrate your breath of life, whatever that is. E even if you, if you can't think of anything else than this, to just focus on the breath going in your nose and coming out of your mouth. I promise you that that will lead you on a path that, that, is, that is a point to trust God through, trusting that that breath is coming in and, and, and will come out. And then there'll be another one right there ready for you. Um, these, these are very small ways that I've taught myself in, in possibly difficult moments or uh, just moments where a praise is necessary to have one always available and ready. Um, getting back. Um, yeah, so within this current air, uh, I think I believe the closer you are to your inner peace is the closest that you can get to the full calm and like the swag of Jesus, right? Like my wife has taught me a lot about like the the attitude of Jesus. Like <laughs> she says very <laughs> sweetly, like Jesus wasn't a punk. Like and being from Brooklyn, that's a very Im important space to manifest in in creating a relationship with God and and creating a relationship with Jesus intentionally. Um, understanding that there's an attitude there, there's a swag there. If you're if we're going in in embodiment of of Jesus, we we have to wear Jesus swag. You got to be cool about it, um, and, and and being cool about it means truly, in my greatest opinion, being kind about it, right? Um, and yes, and specifically about Jesus' attitude to adversion. I think that's a, a specific point to don't on as well. Um, but I move on to number two. My number two point is now the arrival, breaking down the full, the full sentence. So we, first step is, doing your job, second job, arriving right on time. So some years ago, I had the bright and brave idea to go skydiving and I thought it was awesome and it was. I drove out to New Jersey. I was a New, I was a New Yorker at the time. Um, I got on a plane the size of probably your bathroom and I clipped myself onto a man that told me he did this for a living somehow <laughs> and proceeded to jump out of a plane at 25,000 miles in the air. It was the most exhilarating experience I had ever had bodily. I, I felt like a bird. And, and I promise you, if you ever, if you haven't, please take a minute and try to imagine what a bird feels like. It's one of the most powerful thoughts you can give your body. You feel colorful, you feel free. It's, it, it's truly amazing. Um, they, they tell you when you're preparing to jump that in the landing, just extend your legs, you know, and kind of bounce onto your butt um, because it's gonna be a rough landing. And in the track, I remember thinking about the, the waiver you have to sign that says, you know, anything that happens under God, uh, they're not responsible, um, but that all of the fear was wiped away, like completely wiped away. I was twirling in a space of amazement and like just truly the grace of God that, that there's a, a full life species that exists in this space of the world. We're completely on a different plane and you get to see the world in just such an amazing place and directly understand your position. Uh, it, it was it was truly amazing. But the moral of the story is when you've given yourself permission to access your higher you and jump, 
the landing is never a worry. I did not feel that butt bump. I don't remember it. I, I believe as soon as I was disconnected from the apparatus, I was jumping up and down, asking to go back up again. Like it was a, <laughs> like it was a roller coaster. <laughs> um, yeah, the landing, it, it's never there. Walking righteously, patterns those, those, those steps. They, you know, what would Jesus do is, has become such an important phrase because it, it, pulls you back to like Jesus's swag. There's, there's a way to get through everything when you truly walk righteous, I believe. You trust, uh, one of the, 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 the songs that come up is trust in the Lord. I'm no singer, so I'll read it out. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Um, my grandmother mentioned above, Grandma Cook, shout out to Grandma Cook and Reverend Davis, shout out to Reverend Davis in heaven. Uh, they sung that song to me throughout my whole life and I forgot it for many years. And one day it came to me and I just began, I belted out in the car and, and sang to a point of tears. And it, it was just a reminder that like God is always present always present. Um, and, and a couple of weeks ago in church, a, a young lady belted out in the middle of church. So it, it's these little messages that God is always present. It's just really great. That was a complete tangent, but <laughs> uh, getting back to, um, getting back to the script by, yes, my Reverend mother and my grandmother sang the song for me. Um, and it confirms to date and reminds me that when I don't know to give it to God, your relationship with the Lord takes time because it's a precise language for you and God. Trust that Jesus is your friend, like your best friend, best friend. And you'll find yourself right on time for God's love and a relationship with your creator, specifically your creator. And last but not least, three, realizing that there's no instruction. <laughs> I think this is one of the most important to mention uh, because it actually was the hardest step for me. Uh, to know me is to know I'm fun and bubbly, but I am a critical thinker and I have the most analytical brain capacity in any little black girl you can meet. <laughs> so hand me a manual, I can get it done. But, you know, asking me to, you know, just open up and be free, that's difficult. That has been difficult for me. Um, and so through this, I, in a lot of my personal development and like uh, professional development, I work backwards, right? It's like, what's the goal? And what, where are we setting this goal? Um, what is it? It's not impossible if we work backwards, if we figure out a way to get to where we are right now, um, just as a, a, a lifestyle, you know, use. And, and, and I used it here as well with that, you know, critical thinking, analytical brain. Um, so I realized that when you are reconnecting to spirit and developing a relationship with Jesus, that you, you have to draw that map. It's yours. It, it's truly yours. It, it, it's roll out the paper, feel the paper, feel the grittiness of it, choose your pencil, like really work backwards and, and identify that with that emotion and with that space that you are truly seeking the, the enlightenment of Jesus. Well, like, wow. Um, but you get to turn around and see you as well and, and, and trek back to you. Um, so I, it was, it was like drawing out a map for me. Um, like I can, I couldn't figure out how else to do it. I can just Google it, right? Like everything else, um, as a millennial I am, you, you can't Google, how do I connect to Jesus? That, that doesn't work. It, it, it is a soul search. It is a soul locator. You, ha you have to go in. So the reality is your responsibility lies in the physical articulation of God's praise. For we are God's works, work, worksmanship. It is, not for, it is not my work for God that has any value, but God's work for me. And when you truly think in back to working backwards, and you know, even a literal sense, you know, we, we ask for blessings, but knowing that we're already blessed now, how, how am I going to be like the best blessed to get me more blessed? You know, um, it, 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 it was a, another power pivot for me experiencing that in, in real life. Um, so I, you know, say thank you by doing, doing my work, doing the work to make the instructions clear. 
And our job in, in doing the work is making the instructions clear for our, our peers. Like I'm, I'm, I will be the identifier of God's love. If you have no other space to see it, it is my responsibility to do that for my peers, my coworkers, my family, my partner, my church family, and anyone I come in contact with. I, I've spent much time as understanding like how great God is. And so it's like right now I get to choose through God's freedom how divine of a creation I am to access my higher, most optimistic self. So I, I, I leave you with that and really ask you to dig deep today. And that's, you can start with a simple breath. Um, I want to also end with a quote by the poet uh, Rupi Kaur which is how you love yourself is how you teach others to love you. Make that, which is such a powerful statement. I ask that you make that God's love and be the blessing. I thank you all. I love you all. And Ashe, amen. And so it is. <laughs>